Wake me up before you go, go. Buy me books before you go, go. With a new year comes an array of new books, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. My wallet is already quaking. Ah! My TBR pile is shedding tears. My bookshelves want to break in half and say no more. And to that I say, more, more, more. Give me, give me more. You can't stop me. Even if you do break in half bookshelves, I'll always find a way. I'm the one who created this book monster and I will continue to feed this book monster until the end of time. Today, I'm going to be going over my most anticipated book releases for winter 2022. I'm covering months from January to the end of winter, which according to Google is March 20th. Winter is too long in my opinion. Let's get to the good part, aka spring baby. Let's spring forward, shall we? Or I'll just hibernate until spring, I guess. I'm sorry to my winter lovers out there, but I just cannot stand winter. It's gross, it's dark, it's cold, it's depressing. At least there's books to light it up. The sun might hardly shine, but my books will always light up the darkest of days. I can keep going with the cheese if y'all want me to, or we can get started. Let's get started. The first book on my list is Daughter of the Moon Goddess coming out January 11th. Whoever created this book cover deserves a raise because hello beautiful, oh my god, stunning, amazing, incredible, beautiful. This book is inspired by the legend of Chang'e, which is the Chinese moon goddess. In it we follow Xingyan's quest to free her mother. Xingyan has been living in solitude ever since her mother tried to steal the celestial emperor's elixir of immortality. Shoot, I would have tried to steal that elixir too. Actually, do I want to live forever? I don't know about that. The only reason that I would want to live forever Ever so that I could accomplish my goal of reading every book ever. Not that I truly want to read every book ever because I know there's some trash out there. Like literal trash. Trash, trash, trash. But I want to live forever and be able to read all the books that I'm excited about. And like, the thing is, when we die, books are going to continue to come out. And like, I want to read them. Hello? Excuse me? I swear if I get to heaven and there's not a library, I'm going to need to have a word with the Lord. Somebody ring the alarm. Sound the trumpets. When Xingyan has to flee her home and to the celestial kingdom, there she disguises herself and takes time to build up her skills. Mastering archery and magic, she goes on a quest to save her mother, which will have her striking a dangerous bargain that will put her between the things that she loves or plunging herself into the realm of chaos. Listen, Xingyin, I live in the realm of chaos. It's not so bad. Just lots of stacks of random things, lots of books, lots of coffee, boba, and madness. Come join me in the realm of chaos. I don't know anything about the Chinese goddess, but I feel like this book has me wanting to like learn or do some research before I read it. And by research, I mean, hello, Google, google.com, my best friend. Whenever I see someone ask a question on Twitter, my instinct is just to reply with google.com. Both because it's useful and also because I'm annoying. Mostly that I'm annoying. That's that. I love concepts where there's a family member doing everything that they can to save another family member. It makes me weak. And that's what this book has in it. So weak I will be. Weak at the knees. Again, this book drops on January 11th. The next book on my list is The Red Palace by June Her coming out January 25th. This is a historical fiction novel that takes place in Korea in 1758. We follow Hyun who has a few options available in terms of work, but lands a position as a palace nurse. All she wants to do is do a good Job, but she's soon thrust into the dark and dangerous world of court politics. That seems to be how it typically goes, right? These main characters just want to live a normal life, and their authors are like, not happening, chaos, madness, darkness, yes, let's make it spicy. When the murder of four women is pinned on Hyun's closest friend and mentor, she'll launch an investigation of her own to prove his innocence. But when her hunt begins to point in the direction of the crowned prince, she begins to uncover dark secrets within the palace. Give me a corrupt palace full of secrets and I'll give you my love. All my love and I will to you. This is June Her's third book, and I'm pretty sure all of her books have landed on my most anticipated releases list over the past few years, but the thing is, your boy over here has yet to read any of them. Any of them. Are you joking? Absolutely not. I'm done. Cancel me right now. I will accept the cancellation. I need to do a vlog where I just binge read her books because I still have the excitement for these books. Like, I think they all sound fantastic and I want to read them. The excitement has not gone extinct. I just lack the motivation. Welcome to my reading life, where lack of motivation keeps me from reading all the things. I've been wanting to tap into some books that kind of delve into Korean history, and Jun Her's books are perfect for that. They've got the Korean historical fiction element with a layer of mystery, and I need to step up to the plate and read, read, read them. Again, this book drops on January 25th. Next up on my list is Love Boat Reunion, coming out January 25th. Love Boat Reunion is the sequel to Love Boat Taipei, the way I'm about to become complete and utter trash for this book. Nobody talk to me on January 25th because I will be nose deep in this book. The nose will be in the book crack. The way that actually just sounded so bad, excuse me. The first book, Love Boat Taipei, was so fun and I'm highly anticipating the sequel, which is actually more of a companion novel to the first book. In it, we follow Xavier and Sophie, and let me just tell you, those two characters went through, actually, I don't remember Sophie's, like, character arc in the first book, but I know that Xavier went through it in book one. A like pow pow pow. He had his pow 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 moment. Book one delivered on the drama, the adventure, the romance. And I feel like this book is gonna have all of those things but leveled 
leveled up. Level up, level up, level up. It's honestly probably going to be chaotic on all accounts, and to that I say bring on the chaos. I ain't scared of the chaos. The chaos should be scared of me. Again, this book drops January 25th. Next up, we've got This Woven Kingdom coming out February 1st. This is a Persian mythology, the first in a duology. Will it contain technology? Will it tap into psychology? I'll stop trying to rhymeology. My apology. Ah! In this book, we follow Alizé, whom to all of the world is looked at as a disposable servant. The truth is, she's the long-lost heir to the Jinn kingdom. Unfortunately, she's being forced to hide, but in plain sight. There's a prophecy foretelling the death of the king and the crown, and Prince Cameron is well aware of that. But the last thing that he could ever imagine is this servant girl coming through and just completely uprooting his kingdom. This cover just gives me these Violent Delights vibes. Like, it had to be inspiration for this cover. They said, these Violent Delights, but make it gold. It's no secret that the one thing that I love about Tahra Mafia writing is the poetic style she brings to the table. And when I say she brings it, I mean she brings it on. Could literally be a part of the Bring It On franchise because that's how much she brings it on with the poetic writing. She could literally write me a grocery list and I'd probably melt at its flowery detail. I know that style can be a bit much for some of y'all, but it's just what I need at all times. I honestly wonder what it's like texting with Tahara Mafi. Like, is she just as poetic with her text messages? I can only imagine. Doubt I'll ever be texting buddies with Tahara Mafi. Again, this book comes out on February 1st. Next time I list, I have we were kings coming out February 15th. In this book, we follow Francis, who has been convicted of murdering her best friend Cora and has been given the death sentence. Now, with the highly debated accelerated death penalty that's been put into play, Francis has 30 days to live. And someone in Cora's family just doesn't buy it that Francis did this. So this family member decides to challenge the evidence and work to prove the innocence of Francis. Court Stevens is one of those authors that continues to deliver these really solid contemporary stories, and yet it seems that everybody continues to sleep on them. It's baffling to me that she's as underrated as she is. And it makes me sick. Makes me one of them. She deserves more recognition. So put some respect in her name and pick up her books. One of my all-time favorites from her is Faking Normal. It's perfection. Anyway, this one sounds like it's got the potential to be a heart racer, nerve-wracking, and a potentially chill-inducing read. Yeehaw to that. Give me a big yeehaw. Gonna yeehaw my way through this book. When did I enter? Cowboy status. Again, this book comes out February 15th. The next book on my list is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, coming out February 22nd. This book has such a fascinating description. Essentially, we follow Mina, whose homeland has been ravaged for generations. These huge storms that occur sweep away entire villages, and it's believed that the sea god who once protected them now curses them with death and despair. And in order to appease him, each year they throw a beautiful maiden into the sea to serve him as his bride. Now it's believed that Mina's older brother's boothing is the legendary true bride, but on the night that she's supposed to be sacrificed, obviously Mina's brother's like, no, not my boothing, you can't have her, not a sea god. I will fight you for her, I will fight you. You. So he kind of intervenes and Mina's like, you know what? Screw it. I'm diving into the sea. Here I go. Under the sea. When she does this, she is swept away into the spirit realm. And when she seeks out the sea god, she finds that he is in this deep enchanted sleep. And Mina must go on a quest to figure out how to wake him. The thing is, she doesn't have much time as humans can't live long in the spirit realm. The way this concept just sounds like it's going to blow me out of the water, even though it's a book about the sea and hopping into the sea and being in water, I still think it's going to blow me out of the water. It's going to plunge me into the sea and then blow me out of the water just like that. It's giving me Studio Ghibli vibes in some ways. You know that high stakes adventure, making a sacrifice, and then some kind of magical element coming into play. I'm calling it here and now, it's going to feed my Studio Ghibli loving soul. I'm ready for it. Again, this one comes out February 22nd. Next on my list, A Thousand Steps Into Night, coming out March 1st. The second I read Japanese influenced fantasy, I said, pre-order baby! Hey baby! Miyuko, which I looked up a pronunciation, I could not find one, so I'm probably pronouncing this incorrectly, is an ordinary girl living in the realm of Awara, where God and monsters and humans exist. But Girlie ends up being cursed and ends up transforming into a demon with a deadly touch. We follow her on her journey to finding the reverse card and playing it. She gotta reverse the curse. Imagine waking up one day and realizing that you're turning into a demon. Yeah, I'll pass on that. I've been saying how I've been wanting to read more books that are fantasy set in Japan and the book gods must have heard me because that's exactly what I'm getting with this book. Thank you, book gods. I'll be a good little reader and read some books to repay you. Again, this book comes out March 1st. Next on my list, we've got All My Rage coming out March first. This book follows Sal, who is scrambling to help run his family's motel, as his mother's health has begun to fail, and his grieving father loses himself to alcoholism. So far, we've only seen Saba Tahir write fantasy, and it'll be really interesting to see her switch lanes with this book. I'm very intrigued to see how the writing style will be like and how it differs from her fantasy writing, but I love books that are hard-hitting, and this one sounds like it's going to be hard-hitting, so I am preparing for impact. Again, this book comes out March 1st. Next on my list is Gallant coming out March 1st. In this 
this book, we follow Olivia, who is attending Maryland School for Girls. All she has of her life growing up and her past is her mother's journal. When Olivia receives a letter to come home to Gallant, she hops at the opportunity. But when she arrives, it's clear no one was expecting her. I would hate that. I would want to just go into a corner and die. Bury me right here in this corner. But Olivia refuses to leave because it's the first place that's ever felt like home to her. You know, despite her hostile cousin and these half goal creatures that are just wandering the halls of the place. Olivia knows there are secrets here and she is going to do everything she can to uncover them. How is it that Victoria Schwab literally has the best covers in the game? Like, they just give her the best covers? It's unreal. I am obsessed with this. It's bad for me too because I end up wanting every freaking edition of the books that they come out with. And they come out with a lot for Victoria Schwab. They're like editions here and there and there and there and there and there. And I'm like, take my money, honey? Yeah. I'll be honest, the description for this one is kind of confusing. And I hope that doesn't translate to the actual story, which I feel like it won't. I feel like I just need the book itself to like guide me through the story. I don't need this description because this description is just like, what's going on here? What's happening? I'm confused. I feel like it might just be one of those books that's like hard to describe, but like when you're in it, you understand it, you know? Again, this book comes out March 1st. The last book I have on my list is A Far Wilder Magic coming out March 8th. One day, Margaret spots the legendary Hala, the last living mythical creature. Because of this, she knows that the Half Moon Hunt will begin soon. Whoever is able to kill the Hala will earn fame and riches. And unlock the ancient magical secret. If Margaret wins the hunt, it may finally bring her mother home. I love me a magical book with a deadly competition, so long as I'm reading about it and I don't have to participate in it. Do we have too many of them? More than likely. Am I going to stop reading them? As if! Those are 10 books that I am highly anticipating the release of this winter 2022. You guys should let me know down below in the comments your most anticipated releases for the winter season. I'm so ready for the books this year is going to bring us because there are some books coming out that I am so excited for. I can't wait for. I need them right now. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you tomorrow with a new video. Bye! Oh. We're covering months from January to the- I just realized I'm hitting my pillow down here and you don't even realize I'm holding a pillow. For some reason this is comforting to me, to just hold a pillow while I do things. <laughs> Whoever created this book cover deserves a rave. Who- <laughs> They deserve a rave. <laughs> Let's just throw them a rave. <laughs> you let... <laughs> Why can't I say that? I swear if I get to heaven and there's not a library, I'm gonna need to have a word with the Lord. The Lord. <laughs> I've been wanting to- I don't know why I just did that. I've been wanting to- <laughs> The chaos. The way I just glared at that car driving by. They, the prophecy. That's what I was about to say. Prophecy. That's not what there is. The second I just panicked that my mic wasn't on, but it's on. Don't worry. One day Margaret sports sports. She sports. One day Margaret sports.